What up, what up, it's Swift here, bringing you another Clash of Clans video, and in today's video, we're going to be covering the One Hive 2.0 versus WHF2 matchup, and I'm going to be highlighting some of the 10v10s and one of the 10v11s that was successful during the war, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, uh, kicking us off here with a nice 10v10. We got Lima, aka Chad, taking on this person with a really long name, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce at risk of embarrassing myself. But uh, nonetheless, this is a very well executed attack, uh, very well planned attack, nonetheless. Uh, so, dropping a wizard down to start this funnel, takes up the spell factory, and then works its way towards that dark barracks. Uh, then the gold mine. So, we're getting a lot of value from this wizard. And the funnel's set, so he drops his king down and walks towards 12. Uh, plan is to have uh, him walk uh, from 12 to 3, uh, which I believe he does with no problem whatsoever. Uh, dropping a test breaker down at that wall, corner wall, to test for a bomb. And then uh, drops two more and actually gets the wall break. So uh, sends his queen in, and the goal is to get both these air defense uh, here. So with... With that being said, La Loon, most, uh, especially in a 10v10, you want to see where you can gain the most value with the least amount of troop space to get uh, uh, as many air defenses down as possible. Uh, so he successfully does that with uh, a very minimal camp space, which is very incredible. So we got a Gollum uh, Loon CC, which is excellent. Uh, so don't even have to really worry about the CC at this point. Starting the La Loon portion, Pre drops his haste for his loons to uh, quickly take out that uh, Inferno, uh, working his way counterclockwise, uh, and then sending in the hounds <clears throat> as the loons need to make its way around the base, and then uh, drop in early cleanup with these minions, so that's super important. Um, and we got a big clump of loons uh, heading towards that wizard tower in the core. Um, well, excuse me, the expo first, but uh, uh, so it's looking good so far. The uh, queen is still up, enemy queen is still up, so it still has a slither of health. Uh, but we got a big pack of loons here, and it's under heal, so I think we're okay at this point. Uh, uh, got only two point defenses left, and uh, the archer tower goes down, and the last one is going down at this point now. So finally, the uh, queen drops, and we have a lot of cleanup here. Uh, so a lot of minions and a lot of uh, pups up. So very well executed attack by Chad. Um, and this happens just about every war. is incredible um, 10v10 guy, without a doubt. So next up, we're actually going to show another 10v10 by Chad. Uh, gaining a six-pack for the w uh, WHF2 war here. Um, and this one, he does a drag loon attack. So let's take a look at this one and see how he uh, uh, develops this attack and executes it. Dropping a minion at that uh, dark elixir drill and a no, well, a few fanning out a few of the uh, archers around the base, picking off uh, structures where he can to gain uh, simple percent, and then uh, dropping a naked queen with a wizard, kind of helping it out uh, uh, at nine o'clock. You're going to actually start with a queen walk here. So, uh, uh, the funnel had been set, so I, I believe he wanted to walk 9 to 6, which I think he uh, did successfully. Um, so, looking good so far. The minion and archer at the 3 o'clock side, uh, 2 and 3, are still doing work. Nothing to really stop them. Uh, it's going to get uh, uh, some good value from that minion as it takes out that cannon. Queen's getting a little low of health, so we're going to rage soon here. And then, and then he drops the rage. So, uh... As the queen is making his uh, making her way around the base, uh, he drops the king here, um, and this is so that uh, the queen can actually break into this compartment. As you'll see here, he drops his wall breakers, and then uh, almost simultaneously uh, rages the king so that the queen will not actually keep walking. Uh, so very well executed. Uh, well, you know, timing uh, in this point of the raid. Um, we're going to try to take out that uh, that expo in that bomb tower here, and uh, which he does successfully. And he's going to make quick work of this CC. Uh, pretty drop in the poison to uh, take out that loon. Um, 
and the king is actually still up does not have the ability but we need to go ahead and drop the dragon portion of this raid uh, don't want to take too much time otherwise we won't have enough to clean up the base at the end of the raid so raging early uh, gonna push these dragons into the core of the base taking out that air defense uh, in the core and then taking on actually both the infernos at the same time but it's not going to matter we are just kind of piling these rages uh, using them uh, wherever needed and uh so we got a good handful of dragons left still so we got five some with a little bit of low health uh but we use a back in uh, loon haste to take out that last air defense and we're looking solid at this point queen is still up the queen walk is still going gold um so fantastic raid by chad with a uh la loon and a drag loon for his six pack wow what an incredible raid i want to speed this up here finally uses his ability i guess wow so next up uh we're gonna go ahead and take a look at another 10v10 Murfsta versus Lloyd Doss. Um, gonna use a hog attack in this raid. So this one's a fun one to watch. Um, let's pull it up here. Being a little slow as I recorded this. I don't know why. May have been falling asleep at this point. <clears throat> but this is a very solid attack uh, by Murfsta. Um, so dropping a wall breaker here. Gonna pull that. Uh, I don't believe this is a fresh hit. Um, I wasn't really watching during this stream, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, gonna get tremendous value from this bowler. Gonna take out that elixir pump and the uh, Tesla that popped. So uh, dropping a naked queen at uh, eleven o'clock and a wizard and a baby. Um, gonna just kind of help out this uh, this funnel here. Uh, goal is we're gonna go ahead and jump the t town hall area. And then send a, uh, like it's just a small kill squad uh, up the gut to take out this queen and get some uh, uh, hopefully get these infernos. Queen's still doing uh, doing good. Um, King has its ability, so we're gonna take out that wizard tower. Both infernos working on the kill squad at this point. The loon finally goes down under poison, so uh, we're getting some uh, good value from these bowlers. So one of these infernos goes down, but the other one is left standing, doing a little bit of work on that queen. And at this point, it's time to send in the hogs, hog riders, baby. So uh, uh, just trickling them in where needed, and then pre-drops the heal, pathing where the hogs will go next. Uh, that's super important. So uh, uh, we're doing everything right kind of stack the hills at this point but they're under fire by the uh, bomb tower but I you know I think we probably could have delayed the hill a little bit longer but uh, uh, got the job done Queen is actually still up with a slither of health finally goes down with a mortar blast um, so under hill the wizard tower is working on those hogs that absolutely does not do anything whatsoever um, and the final defense goes down taking out the clan castle we have uh, uh cleanup working on the outside so no big deal here so uh great work by murfsta with another 10v10 next up i'm going to go ahead and show one more 10v10 this war um that was done by inter and i believe is also chad um so we got a actually we got a witch slap this war so <laughs> You don't see it very often, or at least I don't, anyways. But uh, uh, there, it's still a viable strat. But if you take notice to this base, he's got a couple of external wizard towers, which could be problematic, um, especially for cleanup or pushing those witches and bowlers throughout uh, through the wings. Um, and in this case, we're going to be going three and six, uh, which slept. So dropping a couple uh, witches and bowlers at uh, six o'clock with a couple of healers. And a baby cat to kind of help funnel the uh, the uh, golems where they need to go, as well as the bowlers. It's kind of a weird funnel here because you got a little nook there that you got to worry about. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, send in the rest of the bowlers, the king, the queen, um, and we're gonna wall breaker into that wall, raging, and then dropping a jump spell uh, that uh, loom will, is just about to go down here. We're gonna go ahead and drop a heal. Uh, before we take the full brunt uh, of the Inferno Towers. 
So looking good so far. Uh, the healers are really keeping those witches and bowlers up. So the wizard towers had no effect whatsoever. We did trigger a couple bombs into the core where the inferno is down. And they, the inferno towers finally go down with the queen assisting. Um, she does get hung up on these skellies a little bit, but uh, it's no big deal. That expo is about to go down. We got one lone witch working its way up to noon, uh, which I believe will go down. Um, but those Larrys are doing work, aren't they not? <laughs> Big pack of uh, uh, witches and bowlers, or yeah, a couple bowlers, at uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, somehow the healer survived uh, the air defense and uh, is still helping out the, in that main pack there. Um, so finally using the queen ability, we get the last couple defenses taken out. And this base is rip at this point. Uh, we did save a skelly spell. Um, I'm not sure if we saved it for cleanup or to tank for the Infernos. I, I would assume it would have been for the Infernos. Um, but uh, we may have found good use for it, as you can tell. So great great job by Enter. And um, all around, we had, uh, what, four 10v10s? So it was a very successful war for us. Uh, and WHF2 is not... By no means, they're not a, an easy clan, so uh, um, definitely exciting to have uh, some good hits this war. Next up, I'm going to show, or lastly, I'm going to show a fresh two-star 10v11 biscuit uh, number two. He's going to take on uh, Ed from WHF2, dropping a couple giants here at uh, about 10 30 or 11 o'clock in a hog we're gonna pull the cc and then uh, uh draw that cc out with an archer we'll deal with that with a baby dragon i dig it kind of hung up right here i was uh taking care of some family matters as i was recording so uh please excuse me for not uh, speeding through this but uh um just bear with me and we're gonna go ahead and take out the uh the CC with the uh, baby dragon here. Once I finally realized what happened, I sped it up here. So, good deal. We're going to speed right along here. Just trying to gain as much per, you know, free percent as we can with the uh, minions and archers or whatever's left, really. Um, so they're gonna get a little bit of value from that not a whole lot but uh you know every percent counts here so dropping a golem and some bowlers under rage at uh six o'clock we're gonna smash in that corner to uh create that nice uh uh natural funnel actually uh into the core so that we can take care of that town hall easier now he did something a little peculiar here but uh uh, he was going towards the eagle, but uh, I, I guess I would have been more concerned with the two infernos that were stacked right there, so you'd be taken on at the same time, especially uh, triggering any kind of bombs or anything like that, which he did trigger. There was three bombs there, um, and it did obliterate his uh, bowlers. But as you can tell, we already have the 50%. Uh, so uh, basically, did a very good job with the uh, the CC and the gaining as much free percent as he possibly could. So the queen's actually going to go ahead and take down that uh, and uh, that town hall, um, and finally goes kapoof. So uh, a whopping fifty seven percent two star on this eleven. So really good war for biscuit, uh, no doubt. Uh, very exciting to have uh, uh, this kind of success this late in the season. So uh, uh, hopefully going into the playoffs, we'll, uh, uh, we'll be able to show out and maybe come out on top. So now I was having a little trouble accessing the war match details, um, but uh, we ended up winning uh, the war 106 to 101. Um, so Hopefully, if I get that resolved, I can be able to put the post that into the next video. But uh, uh, if you can go to warmatch.us, uh, you can look up all the league standings and the final uh, war results on that website. So check it out, uh, uh, and we'll see you on the next video.